Creator Spiritus, mentis tuorum visita, in Paraclitus, altissimi donum Dei, fons vivus in is caritas, et spiritalis unxio. Tu septi formis munere, Digitus paterne dextere, tu rite promissum patris, sermone ditans gutura. Per te sciamus da pater, Nos camus ad que filiu, te que utrius que spiritu, credamus omni tempore. Deo patris it gloria, Et filio quia mortuis, surrexit ac paraclito, in seculorum secula. Other seasons of the church year um, have a major feast associated with them, like Easter, the Easter season. But they may fizzle out a little bit or diminish in intensity as they go on. But Easter is not that way. Uh, first of all, it's the longest uh, season with seven full weeks and uh, including eight Sundays. Uh, but there's a natural growth and flow to it. There's Easter Sunday, of course, then there's Divine Mercy Sunday, the Good Shepherd Sunday, Last week uh, was when Jesus, the, the I am the way, the truth, and the life reading. And then next week is going to be Ascension. And the week after that, Pentecost. The resurrection of Jesus, while it's a monumental pillar of our faith, isn't the end of the story. It's just the start. And the whole season is leading towards Pentecost. That's why we sang the Veni Creator Spiritus. Come, Creator Spirit. Before the original Pentecost, uh, the, the original Christian Pentecost in Acts of the Apostles, the apostles who were the first bishops of the church were, uh, were closed in on themselves, you know, closed in the upper room. They were cowering and afraid, right? But in the gospel, Jesus comes and appears to them and he says, uh, he promises to give an advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept. And he goes on, On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. We kind of forget about the Holy Spirit sometimes. We like to act like the Holy Spirit's a kind of special gift that some people receive and have. Um, and especially, I think, among Catholics, sometimes we say, like, oh, I feel, feel the Spirit moving, and we mean it as a joke. Well, it seems pretty clear to me in the first reading uh, for this Sunday that the early church didn't think of the Holy Spirit as a joke, and certainly not um, Peter, the, uh, the leader of the early church. In the first reading, it says, With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it. Unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice, 
came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. There was great joy in the city, and with one accord they paid attention. That's Unity is, is, a, is, is a quality of the Christian church that is very noticeable in Acts of the Apostles. The disciples throughout Acts, they work together and are generally in agreement, and they even share their belongings in common. Just like, uh, just like today, monks and, and sisters who have a vow of poverty, they, they give all of what they have to the monastery where they are. Same with the early Christians. That, that unity is almost a bigger miracle than pe paralyzed people walking, I would say. Um, <laughs> uh, but why do we doubt, why do we sometimes doubt that those things really happened? Jesus did those types of signs and wonders. So the apostles and disciples who are given the Holy Spirit from Jesus, the advocate that he talked about, could do those things too. The first reading uh, went on. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Well, it sounds kind of familiar to us. It's like confirmation. The bishop lays his hands on the, you know, eighth graders, uh, on their heads and puts oil on their foreheads and asks God to send the Holy Spirit upon them in a, in a special way to help them live out their, their mission that, that God gives them. Um, we don't necessarily understand how or why, but we still believe in that. Pentecost wasn't just a one-time thing, but it, the first Pentecost was the birthday of the church. And from then on, the Holy Spirit is in the church and working, working in us. In the second reading, uh, in a letter from Peter, he says, Sanct uh, Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Sanctify Christ in your hearts. In other words, fully accept what's being, what he's teaching you. Um, not just in word and in thought, but also in deed, right? Always, he goes on, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. So, if, if someone notices that even though, even in this dark time, there isn't a lot of reason for hope. If someone wonders why you have hope, you have to be ready to explain it. But maybe a bigger question we, we could ask is, would anyone even notice that you have hope? Do you have hope? Or, or if you do have it, is it just deep down or is it coming out like the Holy Spirit kind of inspires it to do. Um, and, you know, and if not, then we go back to the sanctify Christ as Lord part. In the gospel, Jesus said, says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. So then we have to ask ourselves, are we sanctifying our hearts and are we ready are we listening to the shepherd's voice, like we talked to about a couple weeks ago, so that we're ready for the Holy Spirit uh, when he comes? So, let's sing Alleluia number one. We. 
regin haceli letare, alleluia. Quia quem meruisti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia. Hey everyone, so I forgot to mention in the uh, video that leading up to Pentecost, uh, the priests are going to be praying a novena to the Holy Spirit. A novena is when you pray for, for nine days leading up to a specific feast day. Uh, so the novena is going to start this Friday, and uh, it's gonna be, they're going to be praying it after each Mass. You can watch the Masses, which are being live-streamed on the Parish Facebook.